The objective today is to synthesize information taken from multiple online sources to create a cohesive description of a computing innovation. So basically I'm going to teach you how to create the artifact today for your 700 word essay that you turned into the College Board. So for an introduction here, computing innovations impact our lives in ways that require considerable study and reflection for us to fully understand them. And in this performance task, you will explore a computing innovation of your choice. A computing innovation is an innovation that includes a computer or program code as an integral part of its functionality. Your close examination of this computing innovation will deepen your understanding of computer science principles. So you'll be provided with a minimum of eight hours in class to develop, complete, and submit the following. And once the testing actually begins, I cannot help you. And so that's why we're going to practice doing a couple of these before the test begins. That way you should feel uh, very comfortable once it starts. So your job on that performance task is to create something called an artifact, and that's what today's lesson is all about, and then you're going to have a written response. You've been practicing these written responses for months now. And the computational artifact itself is so simple that I don't think we needed to have practiced it as much as the writing that we had done. So what is a computational artifact? Your computational artifact must provide an illustration, representation, or explanation of the computing innovation's intended purpose, its function, or its effect. So basically, it's something that does this. Now, the computational artifact must not simply repeat the information supplied in the written response and should primarily be non textual. Down here it says submit a video, audio, or PDF file using computational tools and techniques to create one original computational artifact and that is a visualization or graphic or video or program or audio recording. Acceptable multimedia file types include mp3s, mp4s, waves, etc. and PDF files must not exceed three pages your video or audio files must not exceed one minute in length and must not exceed 300 megabytes in size. So what I want you to do is create this artifact and you're going to have a picture or a visualization that is essentially what's called a word cloud and then I want you to record a short less than one minute video doing these things that the College Board is going to ask you. So before I give you more details of this word cloud, you do have more freedom than just this word cloud, but I just think it's a solid thing to go with. So if you're feeling risky, go ahead and um, do one of these. You could do visual, graphical, and or audio content to help a reader understand the purpose of your chosen innovation. And it looks like the College Board just really likes communication media. So any way you want to interpret that and try to create something from that, it looks like they'll be good with that. Things that are not good, well, I'll go ahead and just have you read that part. But let me just say, any artifacts that have not been created by the student would not be allowed. So you have to do something to create this thing, this artifact, to submit to the College Board. So I suggest that you go to a website like this. And this is a kitty website, but I really like their word clouds. And so I'll demonstrate that here. And even if you just Google ABC Yeah Word Cloud, the first link that pops up should be the right one. And basically, you're just going to copy and paste the 700 words you wrote about your innovation into the site. So here we are at the site itself, and all I did is went into one of the Flash Talk Fridays we had and found a student's work. I won't put their name here, but I copied and pasted their work. And let me get rid of things like the dash and then the citations down here. Let me just delete those citations. All right, and now all I have to do is go up and click Create. And this is it. This is a visualization of the innovation I chose. And I don't like the color, the gray and black, so let's see if I could choose different colors to make it look better. There we go. I like that one. So what I do is right-click, Save Image As. And for me, putting things on the desktop is just the most convenient. So I'm going to go somewhere like Google Docs and then paste in the 700 word essay here and look, there's the citations. And then I put the labels on, so there's 2E, the paragraph that talks about data is 2D, and then the paragraph that talks about the benefits and drawbacks is 2C. And now I have two more to do. I got 2B 
and then 2a itself is the artifacts. And so if you remember, the prompt for 2a is right here. Basically, you're telling the purpose or function of the innovation as demonstrated by your artifact. And then 2b is all about, tell me about the process of creating the artifact. So a good example I put here from December uh, 2a, the computing innovation that is represented by my computational artifact is that of virtual reality. Virtual reality is using technology to create a reality outside of the world by tricking or fooling your brain into thinking you're in a different art environment. The artifact attached with this starts by going through the basic functions that allow VR to work with the headset and a CPU working together to seamlessly stream this information back and forth. The bottom part go more into the stats associated with VR and that is a uh, growing industry for young people and seems to be them be on the move to grow even more so there's the biggest effect overall that this innovation has and then going down to 2b it says I used a website called P Picto chart to create my artifact so what I did is I split up the infographic area into separate blocks okay blah 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 they're just explaining how they created the artifact for you guys with this word cloud you're saying I used a website called ABC yeah to create a an artifact aka word cloud and then I decided to use screencast-o-matic to make a video using my own voice to walk the viewer through some of the highlights that the innovation has. And so at the end of the day, your artifact is an actual video about a word cloud. And if you're really nervous about creating a video, you are more than welcome to use one of the other options here. And I know the directions just said it should be non-textual, but word clouds are definitely okay. When I went through my training, they gave me examples, and what, some of those examples were word clouds, and then just to be on the safe side, if we do a video recording of the artifact, like it says right here, you can submit a video. What I can do is do a video of me talking about the word cloud. So to do the video, I highly recommend going to Screencast-O-Matic and we'll need this same website to create a video of your code running for the create task. For now, I'm just going to do a recording of a recording so you can see what it's like. Once on the Screencast-O-Matic website, all you do is click Start Recording and just do regular Launch Recorder. We don't need to pay for a Pro one. Then click Open Screen Recorder. All right, so we're about to go through some Inception-like experience here where I'm creating a recording on creating a recording. So don't worry about this stuff too much. I mean, I have a microphone plugged in, and it's showing when I talk. It's showing that the computer's getting those words so that's good um, the max time here says 15 minutes we want your video to be less than one minute but Screencast-O-Matic will allow you up to 15 minutes it looks like so if I go down here I'm gonna click the settings to get rid of that I'm gonna click record alright so now it's recording so for me the time isn't rolling here probably because I already have a recording going on so the computer can't access my camera it's already being accessed by another program but for you guys this timer will go ahead and start ticking and if you make mistakes you can either edit it out or just start over from the beginning so now that it's recording I need to just kinda of talk about this and if we jump to the DOL it says here for 2A you need to provide information on your innovation name the innovation describe its intended purpose or function and then describe how your artifact explains the innovations effect so essentially what you're doing here is when the video recording starts you're going to explain what your innovation is the purpose of it and then some effects again staying under one minute so let's pretend I've gone ahead and started recording here. Now I don't want to explain the artifact outside of the document, so let me open it up on my desktop. So I click that, and here we go. Pretend like I'm creating this for the College Board. I'm going to say, my innovation was all about AI creating art. And as you can see here on the word cloud, um, some of the big words is intelligence and drawing and learning. You see words like human here. Um, down here at the bottom it talked about websites it is just a very interesting innovation of having AI create art some of the effects this will have to start with the negative ones people or artists may not be happy that computers are taking this job too 
But at the same time, a more positive effect is website creators who need artwork, especially original artwork, so they don't worry about copyright violations. Uh, for those web creators, they can use this AI to create the art that they're looking for. So don't make your video too short, but definitely don't go over a minute. Okay, so when I push pause on the recording, I have this screen. I just click done. And right here, they're giving me some choices. I want to just save as. So first I have to click publish. This will take a little while. I'll go ahead and cut it out of the video so you can see the end. Once we get to the end here, this should be saved to the downloads file. So here is where the video saved on my machine. If I right click, I can go to properties. And the size is really tiny, 4 megabytes, so I'm all good. And if I look right here, type of file is mp4, so that's something the College Board said is okay. So what do I do with this file now? So here on my next slide, I need you to join my class on the College Board website. So basically you go to digitalportfolio.collegeboard.org and you join my class by typing in this code. Here's what the website looks like right away. So you're, if you haven't taken an AP class before, you're going to click sign up. And if you have taken an AP class and accessed your scores before, you should be able to have an account already. So you just type in your username and password. And if you forgot those things, you can click either of these links. But if you're a person just signing up, it'll take you to another screen that looks like this. And the information they're asking from you isn't too much. And down here, when you create a username and password, try to remember this because this is what you will use to access your scores over the summer. So just agree to the terms and condition and click next. I can help you upload the video from there. And once you've submitted your video, the artifact, then you'll need to submit the PDF of your essay. So this thing right here is the new thing. Now we've already practiced writing essays quite a bit. And if you remember, we did this as a final in December and I gave you this example here. So 2A, you'll still need to write a response even though basically this is the type of stuff you're talking about in your video. And then for 2B, you'll need a written response here. And at the end of the day, all of that writing, all of this, 2A through 2D, needs to be under 700 words. And also don't forget your citations here. You need at least three of them. And I think this is one of the easiest parts of the AP CSP exam. If you can do great here, this will give you a little buffer for the other two things you have to do, the multiple choice and the um, create task where you create a program and then talk about your code. I'll have a separate video on how to do that. So with that said, let's wrap up the PowerPoint. Again, you have eight hours to do this in class. If you want another look at what I'm already telling you, you can go to this link for those in my class. I'll have that link on Canvas so you could just click it. And just so you're clear, here is what is considered plagiarism by the College Board. And I'm not going to read this to you. You can pause and read it. But the, the point is, we need to put a link to the website that we used for the word cloud. So make sure that goes at the very bottom with the rest of your citations. They will not be happy if you don't give ABC yeah, credit and Screencast-O-Matic credit. And then down here, just make sure it's your voice that's very clearly evident in the video. So with that said, today you're going to go ahead and create an artifact on one of your practice essays, and you're going to submit it on the College Board website, but not click the final button to submit it officially. That won't happen for us until April. The last point that I need to touch on before ending the video is your 700-word essay will be submitted as a PDF. So the way you do that, at least from Google Docs, is you click File, go down to Download As, click PDF right here. When this happens, it goes to your download file. So if you right click, you can show it in the folder. And if your folder is messed up like mine or very full, you can click date modified and the thing that was most recent will be at the top here, which is my PDF for my essay. And you can see here, I named it wrong. So if I right click, I can rename and I'll put explore task innovation. Just click off, it'll save, and now I can take this and I can submit it on the College Board website. So again, if you have any trouble with that, just raise your hand, I'll come over and make sure you can submit it correctly.